It felt so surreal as I turned and looked around. Was Monica even talking to us? It felt like my very be being was being spoken to. My whole life was dissipating and being replaced with numbers and letters, all spelling out the name Doki Doki Literature Club. Hey guys, Kuderi Ghost here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Lost Ascension. So we're playing as Sayori, so this is Sayori's story. And so yeah, um, I'm not waiting for him today. I need some distance. I turned and continued my way towards my classes. Not looking back again, I ignore any distinct sound that emerges from his house. <laughs> they all hate the main character. Well, Monica hates the player, but different. But anyway, I rushed my way towards Sayori's classroom to stop her before she would go towards the room he's in. So, uh, if it's green, it's Monica. If it's blue, it's Sayori. My code won't let me in there, at least not while he's in there. If Sayori ends up in there, her normal script might try to reignite and that'd be bad. My mind was determined to succeed, even though I knew at this point it was a bad idea. I opened the door somewhat sporadically, gently, gently, okay, hoping Sayori would still be in the room. Sayori is slumped over in a desk in the corner, quietly napping. The rise and fall of her body as she rests as she rests helped me calm myself. She's good for now. I let out a sigh of relief as I made my way over to the desk she presided over. I gently set my hand on her shoulder in hopes of getting her to arouse without being too jolting and abrupt. So trying not to scare her. <laughs> she shook my hand off initially, still tired and not wanting to get up. But I persisted, now shaking Sayori's shoulder uh, slightly in hopes of getting her attention. Sayori, come on. Sayori, you really need to wake up. It's almost time. Sayori mumbles from between her folded arms uh, over her face. For I patiently remind her. It's time for the literature club, vice president. Sayori practically jumps out of the seat, panic stricken across her face. Her eyes were now wide open as she looked at the clock. Oh my gosh, Monica will be so mad if I'm late again. She nearly panicked before looking at me and blinking several times, her face going from panic to some other emotion I couldn't quite place. M Monica? I I I'm so sorry. Ah, it was guilt. <laughs> I had to admit after everything, I was beginning to understand why people liked her so much. She was cute, witty, and warm. That's Sayori. She's the Cinnabon, okay? Best girl. Ignore my last video. <laughs> I ignore it. Didn't happen. I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> A smile formed across my face. No worries, Sayori. It's all right. I was just pass. I was just passing by and looked in. I saw you napping, so I decided to come get you. She calmed down a bit and smiled deep, <laughs> smiled sleepily before letting out a large yawn, shaking herself awake and standing up. Sayori stood, quickly sliding her stuff into her bag and her bag on her shoulder. Something abrupt, something brushed against my hand. I glanced down to see that Sayori had grasped my hands, her fingers intertwining with mine. Are you going there? Are you, <clears throat> are you going there, Mod? <laughs> Let's go, Monica. We can't be late to our own club. Sayori exclaimed as she yanked me out into the hallway and towards the club room. I, I let out a small laugh as we ran through the halls together. The broken code had really taken hold here. This really is a fan game. <laughs> or, uh, what, what? I don't know. Whatever. Fan, uh, fan story? I don't know. Whatever. Fan service, too? It's not the word I was looking for, but it's another one. Instead of continuing to let Sayori keep dragging me along behind, I picked up the I picked up the pace to match Sayori's speed, keeping a hold of her hand all the while. With Sayori as our guide, we made quick time to the room. I feel like they like each other. I don't know. I feel like Monica has a weird crush from what she said in the first episode. Check it out. There's a card. Anyway. We got to the room, and Sayori threw open the door, scaring the other two members a bit, as well as startling me. <clears throat> Those two are getting along now. Good, the code's working its way to them. They seem to have been in deep a deep conversation before we arrived, and were taken off guard by our, our sudden entrance. 
Sorry, we're late. Sayori yelled out as she dragged me in, uh, giving the other two the same breathing space and time to calm down. You didn't have to practically nuke your way into the room, you know. <laughs> Natsuki piped up from the corner. Yes, she did. She's, she's Sayori. She always has to make her self known, okay? <clears throat> Yuri, still appearing stunned, made no movement. I began to realize that she might have a rather adverse reaction since she gained partial sentience during the... Uh, <laughs> I snapped myself out of my thoughts, overcome with a new problem. Sayori's gaining sentience too. Would they remember what I did? I swallowed once as Sayori released my hand. I only had today to talk to the girls before he would arrive tomorrow, so I needed to get this out of the way now. Wait, what's the main character doing? Exactly, like, if, if Sayori's not there, is he just sitting there like, huh? <laughs> okay, everyone, I have something a bit different in store today. Monica stood at her podium spot with a finger raised and a smirk across her lips like normal. Everything is going great today. Morning, school, club, it's all perfect. And Monica, it was so nice of her to wake me up like that. I can't thank her enough. She was such a great president. She always knew exactly what to do and how to do it. I shook my head a little, turning my focus back onto our president. Really? Are you, are you doing this? <laughs> As I watched her intently, she began to address everyone in the room. I have something. She trailed off, clearly lost in thought. My smiles... My smile wavers a moment, noting some unhappy emotion in her expression. Was it sadness? Fear? Confusion? Anger? I int I, it's guilt. <clears throat> it's the same thing. I internally start to spiral, hundreds of worst case scenarios filling my head with the ge as gears t keep turning. Oh god. Uh, was Monica having a rain cloud? Oh. Okay. Good, it didn't crash this time. <laughs> it intentionally crashed the first time, okay? Not an error. Okay, she didn't seem alright recently, not herself. Monica's whole demeanor shifted as she sat down near her podium and looked at everyone, solemn expression casting down from her face, affecting the mood of the already silent room. I'm sure you've already started to notice some changes around here and maybe some emotional stuff. Yuri and I gasped simultaneously. How did she know I was having a good day? <laughs> <clears throat> the spiraling continued. Was I smiling too much? Was it because I dragged her down the hall? I need to explain something that might just help me get this point across to you three. She stood up and walked over to the, her podium once more, looking at us all before clearing her throat. This reality, unlike what everyone has grown to accept, is a lie. Everything around us is a predetermined location with nothing to it, minus just enough code to contradict this game's contradict this game to the point of being playable our lives our homes everything we know is a pre-written lie all in an effort to create a game about dating us and using our emotions for pure entertainment <clears throat> blame dan salvato okay i didn't do it okay you can't blame the player for designing a game that they didn't design okay what why was she speaking so funny? They're also blaming... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> it felt so surreal as I turned and looked around. Was Monica even talking to us? It felt like my very be being was being spoken to. My whole life was dissipating and being replaced with numbers and letters, all spelling out the name Doki Doki Literature Club. The name of our club. My home. My life. I could feel tears welling up in my eyes as I looked back at Monica again. Her hands clenching clutching the podium tightly. I look back at my only friends. Natsuki seemed to be in co total shock, and Yuri's eyes were as wide as could be, the two of them opening their mouths. Y y you're kidding, right? This is some kind of joke? Did you really think I would fall for that, Monica? You must think I'm a complete, total idiot if you think I'd fall for something like that. Okay, if I saw some magical text just pop up in my, like, in my eyes, I would be like, okay. I'm in a game. <laughs> <clears throat> she huffed a moment, however it looked completely terrified. I wanted to go and hug her, but someone, somebody else jumped in for that job instead. Monica, g keep going please. Yuri spoke just loud enough so we could all hear. She didn't seem sure of it either, but she, was, she wasn't about to tell her to stop. 
I once thought that the one playing with us was here to love one of us, love me, but in reality, he doesn't even care. He just assumes we are puppets in a game to be treated without love and dignity. He uses us for his amusement, for his pleasure, for his sadistic torture. It's not the player. It's not the player. Blame Salvato, okay? <laughs> Sorry if you're watching this. He's probably not, but just saying. You're awesome, but stop. <laughs> you ruined them. <laughs> Monica finally stopped, and the feeling that was present before began to fade away. And I watched everyone die over and over. You also deleted people. Tell them the truth instead of being mad at the player. She looked up at us with tears flooding those emerald green eyes. And I was the one who made it happen. I don't know why I... Yeah, okay, okay. My heart ached. At least she says it. My head spun around. From the muffled sobbing that was occurring in the background, it was obvious that Natsuki was tr taking this poorly as well. I stood up and rushed over up to her out of my pure reaction, my own reaction. It, it's okay, Monica. I know you wouldn't do something like that. You're too nice. I hugged her tightly, her arms limp at her side. This feeling felt familiar to me, like I had been there as well. But my happy thoughts continued to be to push it away, making it seem like a distant memory instead of being pre prevalent at all. Sayori. She eventually hugged me back, her arms trembling a little as she clutched the back of my jacket, muffled cries mixing in with apology after apology. She eventually broke the hug and explained to us the plan. She seemed serious about it. While I wasn't so very excited to do that to somebody, the other two seemed more than happy to oblige. See, Sayori's a Cinnabon, okay? She just got dragged in with the with the crowd, alright? Anyway, I'm gonna end the episode there. I'm gonna leave it on a cliffhanger for you, and I will see you in the next video. Uh, also, if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button to become a ghost, and I would really appreciate that. Also, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Peace.